Good morning, it's Thursday the 14th of September and awesome cup of coffee for Coffee with God this morning. That's nice. If you have your Bibles, turn to 1 John 4 verses 7 and 8. In Johannes 4, verse 7 and 8. We've been talking about sin and the fact that uh, God is not bound to the moral law that that you and I are subject to. And uh, I want to show you that this morning because every time someone entered into the presence of God, we think uh, most famously of Isaiah in chapter 6, he declares as he goes into God's presence, uh, Woe is me, for I am undone. I'm completely undone. I'm a man of unclean lips and I live amongst the people of unclean lips. And Jeremiah, uh, uh, Ezekiel, everyone who went into the presence of God and experienced the presence of God is overwhelmed by his holiness, by his, by his perfection, by who he is. His train fills the temple um, are the words used to describe uh, God in on his throne in in uh, Isaiah and everywhere where people come into God's presence they are overwhelmed by his uniqueness his otherness uh, and God is not subject to moral law God is moral law is what we subject to and God would have that we live that out under the leading and guidance of his Holy Spirit, so that we can be like him. But we focus so much on correcting sinful, wrongful actions. And I want to show you the otherness of God in 1 John 4 verse 7. Beloved, let's love one another, for love is from God. And everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. The one who does not love God does not know God because God is love. God's otherness is his holiness, but the eminence, the otherness of him is perfect love. Uh, And we, when we think of perfection, we think of eradicating sin and living a morally pure life. Um, God is just on the next level, next plane. And he's saying, "Ah, that that's not even part of who I am and part of my kingdom and part of my being, part of my thinking, the sinfulness and the obeying of a moral law. With God, it's about love and it's about giving love. He's the source of true love uh, and and he because he is love. So his holiness is painted on the canvas of love and that's what makes him other. He declares in the Psalms, who, who can be compared to me? There is no other God, no other God like me. Um, and I want you to grasp that this morning. We've been talking about sin and, and the, the correction we try to make. Um, and so a lot of what we do in response to life is driven by fear. And I want to say to you, God is not driven by fear. God doesn't know fear. He knows love, and he's perfect in love. And in Christ, listen to me, this is so important. In Christ, we're transported from the kingdom of darkness and despair and fear and anxiety and sinfulness, the law of sin and death. We're transported into the kingdom where the law of life in Christ Jesus, the spirit of The law of life in Christ Jesus rules and reigns. And love becomes our focus. Others become our focus. The the giving and the expressing of positive upbuilding becomes our focus from within us. And God says he'll deal with the sin because he's outside of sin, helping us deal with our sinful state. We in a sinful state. We're in, caught in the mire of sin. And 
it's difficult to deal with it from within. But God deals and helps us from without. And that's the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ that I want to just remind you of this morning. Let's love one another. Not again as a thing to tick off and as an action and a, but let's love because we've been born of God and we know God and God is love in us, with us, through us. Experience that. Realize that this morning. Stop being a slave to correcting your actions and start being a child who lives out his inheritance. Have a wonderful, wonderful Thursday this morning. Today I choose.